Okay, here's the opener. Do I look like I want you to join a cult? No, this the way this 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 whole look is here. By the way, the cult though is Vote Dog. Ugh, higher, higher, higher. He's a good boy. <laughs> it's a silly shirt. Welcome back, friends. Lost Guy here, and it's time for the vlog. Um continuing the Y series. That'll be the second half of this thing. By the way, there is a president dog in Dragon Ball. If everyone forgot, the president of the world is a dog, which is amazing. Okay, so current events. Anything current events to talk about? Anything with the channel to talk about? Well, projects are happening. New Amiibo fight's going to come out eventually. It's almost done. Uh, Scarf got back into FF14. Oh, crap. Okay, so uh, I'm up to the Titan fight for those who play FF14. And... Uh, me and Jinx have the Titan fight. I'm not going to get beyond the Titan fight until it's me and Jinx playing it again. I'm just playing it to hang out with friends uh, who are in the game. They kept talking, like, fine, I'll get in there and hang out and just do hanging out stuff. And I just can't stop making Lollafells because the, pot the potato children are hilarious. And having a potato child in the main store, no matter how serious the situation or how silly the situation, a potato, a potato child makes it better. It really does. I just can't stop making them, but I need to make like a regular size guy, um, just for avataring, I suppose. When the bunny men come out, so they're made, they're adding bunny men, which uh, I think lore people are mad about because I think bunny ladies are supposed to be the only bunnies that exist in the Final Fantasy world, and now they're adding bunny men. So I'm curious how they're going to explain that. The expansion coming out later this year, and it's going to have bunny men. I'm going to make a bunny boy. I'm going to try to find a really funny name, and I'm not going to say what the name is that I thought of, because someone might take it. I think it's a good name. But the newest Lollafell made is Captain Tim Tom, because who doesn't name a Captain Tim Tom? I think that's not hilarious. Just got to find, like, an Admiral hat or something, and that'd be great. I didn't go with Admiral, because I don't think as much water stuff. Uh, FF14 is just a fun game, and it's free, and I think uh, free to play the first parts of it. You can't do too much, but you can do enough to get through the first part of it and then see if you like the game. Unfortunately, the first part of the game is apparently the worst part of it, and then later it gets amazing, so... Um... Most of their said about that, I think it's like 50% off right now if people want to get in on it. I have every expansion, is, and I've never gotten out of Realm Reborn because, oh my god, that story is so hard to get through. We've had this... Me and Jinx have had this game since 2015, I think, or 17, I forget. And we're up to the Titan fight, which is such a small percentage of the game. It's just that a hardest slug to get through that store. Uh, more one-shots are coming. We've been playing MechWarrior 5, me and Jinx co-op. It's pretty fun. We'll do a one-shot on that. There's also going to be another one-shot on a game called Until We Die, which is a mix of Kingdom and Pikmin in the Metro, which is a very fun game. I enjoy, I enjoy it quite a bit. It's a good evolution of that concept, of the concept of, co of Kingdom. And then I'm just looking for more indies to do. And then there's side channel stuff and things like that. And the way I'm doing our work is, um, for my side of things, it's an alternation of, pl of projects. So I'm either making videos for the side channel, or I'm working on the Kirby podcast, or I'm working on the Amiibo tournaments, or I'm working on main channel LPs, and at times collaboration with Jinx doing the one-shots, or... Uh, as we slowly work on the Abwain series. That's what's going on. Uh, Resident Evil 8 is going to come out eventually. And then after that might be Portal Reloaded? I'm not sure. Portal Reloaded is a very interesting idea, and I'm having a hard time with it. So i got to talk about this real quick. So Portal. Portal Reloaded is a mod for Portal 2 that a lot of people really enjoyed, so I got in on it. It has three portals now. So you got your usual two portals, and then you got a time portal. And everything you do is going forward. Um, everything you do in the present affects the future. And everything in the future is fine. But if you do anything in the present, it ruins what you did in the future. So it's a very mind-bendy puzzle game, hurting my brain so much. I look really dumb for anyone who knows what they're doing in these. And it's an interesting thing. Playing it made me think about something, though. I'm thinking about LPs. Thinking about videos on YouTube, thinking about... So I'm going to talk about this before I talk about why. The why of this uh, uh, week. And that is, what is the point of a video? What is the point of a video on YouTube? 
And there's a couple answers. One is, there is no point. You just put it up because you want to put it up. That's one. The other point is, the point of entertainment or interest or, or education, like, I think there needs to be a point, why does it exist? For us, at least. Why are you watching a video? Like, there's Kyrgyzak. Uh, Kyrgyzak. How do you pronounce it? Well, why do you watch Kyrgyzad videos? Kyrgyzad videos are very interesting. Like, they're kind of theory crafting what could happen in the future. But they also talk about current events like global warming, or they'll talk about vaccinations, or is milk good for us or not, and what are the effects on the world of milk is, how we're doing with climate change. They do really well thought out and researched the videos. And so they're very uh, entertaining in education. That's why I watch those videos. I also watch Oversimplified, if you ever heard of them. Oversimplified oversimplifies history. So they go over like World War II, World War I, the Three Kingdoms period. And they have some jokes in there. It's very entertaining for, for jokes, but it also has interesting information. And of course, they express that they're oversimplifying things. So of course, you want to understand it better and get more information. You want to go deeper. But this is the oversimplified version of it. And it's fun to watch that. I forget the guy, the guy who does the crap guy to D&D and crap guy to other things. That's very entertaining and also informative because he's being funny while also expressing things that are worth knowing about the D&D classes. And he also does the same thing for Monster Hunter. I think the crap guy guy is kind of a good uh, example of what we used to be and what I wish we could still find a way to be. And that is being funny and informative. That's what the old Smite stuff was. But at this point, we've been more reactionary. And there's... Why do you, what, what, why does reaction videos ex exist? Why do LPs exist? LPs exist for a couple reasons. The LPs exist because you want to follow the story. Like, the LPs I've watched, uh, I've watched LPs because I wanted to see what the story of the game is. It's usually for a game I can't play, like a PlayStation game. I want to see the story. Or it's because I don't want, I don't have the time to play the game myself. And I want to play, like, some sequel game or something. So I'll watch the story and in in I'll watch someone else play through it. Or you're watching it for gameplay. You're watching it because you want to see how other, people's ta other people tackle the game you played yourself. Or you want to see just how do you tackle like a puzzle. So for Portal Reloaded, I watched a video on Puzzle 9 because I could not solve it for 20 minutes. Turns out there's like a bug in my version of the game. Where the thing that was a solution I tried to do and it wasn't working. And now I, I can now do it because I got around the bug. So it's very unfortunate. But that's one of the functions of YouTube videos as well is just information. Like I said before. But like, like walk through. That's the way to put it. Walk through. You watch it to see how you get through a thing. And I think videos that are specifically made for that are very good. Like, you just want the specific puzzle, look it up, there you go, and you get to see that one solution. It's a two-minute video, there you go, that's good, that's very helpful. Whereas there's people like me who are LPing it, and you see us, you see people like me succeed and fail and have reactions. And why do people care about reactions? Because reactions are kind of a form of schadenfreude, but not exactly schadenfreude. Well, sometimes it's schadenfreude. It's just that we like to see other people's reactions to things. We enjoy that. And I realized that since I was a kid. So this week's why. We did... I forget what the other whys are all of a sudden. The well, last time was, why do I create? Why do I make? Why do I make things? This time is, why do I share things? And I think part of it is human... Uh, maybe not all human nature, but a human nature. A human nature that some humans have. By the way, this, this why series, I should say this at the start every time. What is the Y series? The Y series is just exploring my psyche and why do I do things, my thoughts on things, because it's good to take a self-inventory and maybe some of y'all do it too and it should lead to personal growth. So why do I share? Why did I create? Why do I share now? Why do I share what I create? Why do I share things in general? Why do people share things in general? It is a human nature. They uncovered parts of Pompeii when Mount Vesuvius exploded and just covered that whole place up. And they found there were walls where people just put up messages. Just a wall. Just a stone wall or whatever kind of material. And people put messages on there. Like someone put like, this person was here. Or that they're selling something. Like a bulletin board. These things existed that long ago. What is Twitter? It's just a bigger bulletin board. <laughs> like a live journal or just MySpace. All these things. People have shared themselves forever. You had the soapbox people. 
Back in the day, the soapbox was a literal soapbox. Some guy would get on a soapbox and he would just say his things. He'd say his piece. You see this in like games and stuff where there's just someone in the in the crowd and he's just talking and then people are just standing there listening to him talk. Like he plays some game like some religious dude is just standing there talking and he's preaching to people, things like that. Or even, let's see here, um, like, okay, 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 very niche example, Hamilton. If you watched Hamilton, you had that part where Mr. Seabury stands there and he's talking about how bad it, how bad it is to rebel against uh, England. And then Hamilton comes in and sings at him. So Seabury's basically being on a, a soapbox at that moment, just telling people, like, it's not a good thing that we're, that we're trying to fight uh, England and all that stuff. It's just literally a dude standing on a soapbox, preaching, just saying his piece. People have shared with their thoughts and opinions with other people, whether they want them or not, forever. Another example would be, of course, uh, scholars just sharing their thoughts with other people who want to hear them, or just people who just talked, philosophers. Let's go over to like Socrates and Plato and those dudes. People just have always liked talking and talking to crowds and sharing their thoughts. Twitter, other forms of social media, they are really pretty much that. All those influences who are just like, look how great my life is, your life can be great too, is those people. It is soapboxers. And it can be very shallow, it can be very deep, it can be meaningless, superfluous, it can be all these different things. You can't really tell, I'm sure, on the surface, if someone actually means what they're saying, or if they're just saying it to get, you know, following. So why do I share? Let's go back to me. Why do I share? One of the answers is why not? Why not share? Uh, the question is, well, what am I sharing? That's also the thing is there's also security. Obviously, what should be shared? What should not be shared? And the answer to that is, of course, what depends on the audience. Of course. You don't share important information about you that could be used against you. Say, uh, just identification things, of course. You don't say certain things like that on social media. Because then someone could probably use that to take your identity, and then you're in trouble there. Or, somebody could use that with more famous people uh, to find out where they live and things like that. That is a trip, by the way. It's a trip when people just show up at someone's house thinking that's going to be okay. Well, you don't want a random stranger coming to your house. I share to prove that I am here. That I am a person. That I create. And this is my creation. This is what I do. This is, this is me existing. And there is merit to say to people who don't need to share to be to exist, but there are people who need to share to exist. And to an extent uh, that I'm both things, I could easily just have we never did YouTube and any of this stuff and just played games that was and just have my life be my life. But I've enjoyed creating because I at the end of the day like to create. And when you create something, you want people to know what exists, I feel. Like I don't think it's necessarily narcissism. It's you wanting your thing to be appreciated because when you breathe life into something, you want it you want people to like it. You want people to share it. You want people to enjoy it. You want you want something to come out of it, not monetarily, but just for the work itself, I think. The amiibo tournaments. I really enjoy them. And or just a really good joke. Like a really, really good joke or a really good video you make. You want people to see it and appreciate it and maybe get a chuckle out of it. Or be entertained by it. You want people to go, well, that was not a waste of my time. I think at the basis level. That is another reason why I share is I just want to show that I exist, but also I want what is created to be appreciated. Like, I made this thing, and I hope other people like it. Because if they like it, then... In a, in a sense of, uh, what's the word here, where you give inanimate objects emotion or you give them soul. In a sense of whatever you create now has, now exists, now it is a thing, and you want it to be appreciated. It's like, well, it's good for that thing. Like, if you, for a labor of love, wrote a book, talking thousand pager, some people don't have to share that. They, they just keep it with them and it's, then there you go. But you just feel like when you do such a big thing, you got to share it. You need to have other people see it. And you want to see what they think of it. And you want to see their reactions to it. Okay? Linking back to that. 
And to an extent, uh, there's a vicariousness to it, too, when you're a creator. When you get to see how other people enjoy it. Because you can't necessarily enjoy what you make yourself in the way that a viewer can. So you get to see how the reactions are to your thing. And you get to enjoy that. You get to re enjoy a reaction. To a different extent, um, sharing what you don't create. Just sharing a scene you saw and you're like, oh, this was really good. So you want to see how other people react to it. Like, that's why you share as well. You share things you like with other people to see what if they like it and how they like it. And then you just have this thing, this similarity together. And that's another way to put things as well, is groups. We like to put things in groups. We like to be in groups. If we say, really like Kirby, and we share that with other people to find other people who like Kirby, now we have someone to be grouped with. Of course, you don't find anybody. It feels isolating as well. Another reason I share, and I can't tell, because it, it will sound pompous. I, not pompous, it will sound probably not great unless you believe in the earnest of the answer, earnestness of the answer. And that is, I share because I want to help. The old Smite videos, the guides and all that, that was, of course, wanting to help. I shared my knowledge to help people. Why share these LPs? Why share me playing a game what is the purpose of that and the purpose of that is well entertainment i want to entertain other people i want to make them smile i want to make them happier i want to lighten the load of their day that is why i share because somebody out there will enjoy something i make uniquely something i make despite the fact that something other people have played other people have done there is something about mine that may reach somebody. And that is an interesting thing that I think is a truth. And that is, somebody out there, your story can be something that could be very moving for someone else. And I mean that in the wide you. The royal you. Anyone who writes a story, or makes a comic, or does art, this or that, they can put out this piece of art... I know an example, but I can't find the picture. There is there is this drawing of Princess Daisy. This is from like 15 years ago or 20 years ago. That was so profoundly good, in my opinion. It was just really well drawn. It was very impressively made. And it just looked really good. And it was like my favorite drawing ever. It was just something that looked really good. And I really liked it a lot. And it, had, it profoundly made me appreciate art. It really did. Like, as like a 12-year-old, like, you can draw something like this? You can make something look so good. And it, it profoundly affected me when it came to art and appreciating art. And then I went to their deviant art, and they had quit art like three years ago. <laughs> uh -huh. No, it was when I was 16, not 12. 16, and they quit when I was like 13. And that also broke my heart. Because apparently people were telling their art wasn't very good. And I would have told them their art was amazing. But I was too late to the party there. I was too late. They're already gone. That is the double-edged sword to sharing, is you also open yourself up to people who are just not very nice about things. I don't want to keep dusting that, that chestnut. But, I'll, but of course I have to think about it, because why isn't it in the back of my mind? We did something that was uniquely so good... That it has saved lives. It was enough to hit somebody in a way that would save their life. And referencing again, because in case you're new. So explaining that a little bit. We used to make Smite videos. We used to just do videos of me playing Smite. Me explaining my thought process. The entire situation. Going over what other players are doing. Being very informative. But also being very entertaining. Because I'm just freaking out and reacting at things. And playing a pretty good game. And I played Thanatos very well. Thanatos is just a very good god in general uh, for anybody. So, because he's percentage-based, which means you can do a lot of really good stuff. I just going off, being really entertaining, really funny, just being very informative, just wrecking. Very good video I made. And I made a lot of really good Thanatos videos. And somebody wanted to kill themselves. And they were on YouTube just passing the time while they were working on killing themselves. And they saw Thanatos video, they recommended them, they clicked on it, it was us, it was really entertaining, they laughed till they cried, 
and they stopped their suicide attempt. We uniquely made something that was so good it stopped someone from killing themselves. We are capable of profoundly affecting each other through what we create, through what we say, through what we share. And I think that's why I share maybe, aside from narcissism, is I share because I want to connect. I want to affect. I want the waves that I make to move the reeds, to move other people. And here and there, I succeed. I don't always hear about it, of course, but I succeed somewhere. Even in videos that have maybe five views, every now and then someone says they really like it out of those five viewers. And that me is meaningful. Of course I want a million people to see the videos. Of course, by the way, we've broken that. We, we're at like, what, two plus million views overall from all our videos? People have watched her stuff. People have enjoyed her stuff. There's people who just like, they clicked on it, like, meh, and they went off. But when you share, you just, you're putting yourself out there and you're doing something. And I realize, huh, different connection. Just realize that's why I need to get back out. I need to get out there harder when it comes to dating apps because if I don't exist, then no one knows I exist. If I don't do anything on those apps, no one knows I exist, and then I can't date anyone because they don't know I exist. A future topic I need to figure out how to articulate is the maelstrom within of the different motivations. Because partially, I'm all about just the hermit life, just being inside and just doing my thing. But at the same time, I'm also all about affecting the outside world and the outside world affecting me. And also, I don't want to be lonely. Not, at least not forever. If I could live the hermit life with, with some lady, that'd be kind of cool. Well, I think that's partially the goal. Or live, just live life with someone. That they let me be a hermit at times, and then we go out and do things at times as well. So that is why I share, at least as far as I can think at the moment. Trying to explore the thought process on that. Sharing is my way to connect with everyone else. It's how I connect. There's another why, though, I wonder how that would work, and that is, why do I try? Because I feel like there's another, there's another question there in that specific word of why try. Because why create is different from trying. The creating is a different type of trying. Sharing is a different type of trying. Like, try is, of course, just such an overarching word. It's an umbrella over a lot of different things. So maybe I can find a way to make try more specific, but right now I'm thinking there's going to be a subject, not next time, but in the future, just why do I try? Why do I put in any effort? Because there are people who believe in, why do you do anything? And I hated those people in high school. I, I really wanted to deck those people in high school. It's such, it's not an emo thing, it's just, there's just, I don't know about this generation, but for my generation, there was always that shithead in school who gave you shit for doing anything. And that's just so pathetic. And if you were that person, my apologies. But uh, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so anyway, that's it. That is the vlog. I am now going to go do physical therapy and go get tortured. Not the right way to put it. It is pain to gain. Um, but, you know, safe pain, because uh, they're not trying to kill you. They're trying to help you get better. And we've gotten stronger. Hmm. This hair still isn't long enough to donate. Like, I think society for sure finds me very un ungreat looking right now with all this hair. Eventually we'll get cut down and short and everything. It's kind of fun having long hair at times, though. Oh, okay. It's only fun... When you want to look more, I don't know, savage in a way? Not savage, not just more wild. When you want to look more wild, it's fun to have long hair. Because it's hard to look wild with short hair. But there are times when I want to just look neat, and you, it's hard to look neat with this. Like, ponytails just don't, don't make you neat enough. It really don't. Also, you just look restrained when you try to be neat with long hair. I don't want to look restrained. I want to look, you know, 
just with short hair. With short hair, I just want to look calm or cool. While this, it's just wild or restrained. That's enough thoughts. So there you go. That is the vlog. I had fun talking. Hope you had fun watching and or listening. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by and see you next time.